Welcome back, everybody. It is Thursday, June 21st, 2018, 5.56 a.m. All right, is today the first actual day of summer? Wow, it's actually here. Believe it or not, we are in the first day of summer, uh, maybe first morning of summer. Um, regardless, summer's here. It's been hot, uh, especially in the Northeast. We've had a heat wave going on, but we are talking about something different a little bit today. Now, this graphic is a little older. We were watching that tropical system uh, that possibly had that chance of forming into a cyclone uh, moving through the Gulf, passing over Cancun, where we have a situation going on right now, too. We'll talk about that. Uh, but the reason I'm showing you this graphic is because we have had effects on Texas, major effects, actually, major flash flooding, um, a lot of water in a short period of time with more to come. Uh, so this was our graphic we were watching uh, with that possible chance of cyclone formation. Obviously, that did not happen, but the point here is to show you what happens even though we don't get the tropical cyclones, when you get those tropical waves, the amount of water we're dealing with is crazy. Uh, current temperatures waking up this morning. Um, we got 46, obviously, up there way by Canada in Maine, and then we get to our milder temperatures, 50s and 60s in the northeast. Uh, a little bit drier down in the south near Florida, but then Texas, saturated, guys. We are talking major flooding. Uh, 76 degrees, 75 degrees, 73, 77, average of mid-70s in this area. A little bit cooler up in the mountains, um, and that's what we're dealing with. Then we got some of our desert areas, Southern California, um, 86, pushing 90 already in some areas, so uh, pretty mild. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few areas before we get to Texas. Um, St. Louis, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we got Louisville and Cincinnati under storm watches for today. Possible hail situations, damaging winds, flooding, downpours, and hail. So... Uh, that's what we got to look out for tonight, actually. This will happen overnight tonight um, or as the sun is going down. So those of you that live in this area just underneath the Great Lakes, uh, stay on alert for this because we have a whipping sort of deal going on with the Doppler radar, which we are going to look out shortly. Quick look at our tropics. You can see down here... Um, a little bit of action going on uh, as we get some of that moisture moving off land into the Pacific down here. But again, I want you to focus on this area of South Texas right here, that big purple uh, blob you just saw. And then as the moisture comes up, we have sort of a counterclockwise hook up here, which is a lot easier to look at on this, obviously, which we're going to get to. Uh, but first, we're going to go down the line here. You can see how the lightning is kind of following that border of Mexico and Texas as this system moves up into uh, Louisiana. Um, as we watch this go, it's going to move into the northeast. So we do have kind of a swirl going on over the Great Lakes, which is why they're worried about that um, overnight tonight system moving right underneath the Great Lakes here, causing the hail and thunderstorms. And then we have the moisture that's being pushed up from the Gulf with that tropical system that's eventually going to get pushed up into the northeast. So... This is why we are talking about this. It is already causing major flooding in Texas and eventually will make its way up the Ohio River Valley into the northeast. So, as far as our warnings and watches go, you can see down here with the green county-by-county uh, county website flash flood watches all along this area. Uh, pretty rare one here in Mississippi, a child abduction emergency. There's an amber alert all over the state of Mississippi right now. Um, I believe a little girl has gone missing, so um, I will keep you posted on that as well. But you can see all along uh, different parts of the U.S. we have flash flood warnings. We can see where we watch that um, area near Cincinnati and uh, stuff of that nature underneath the Great Lakes. we got to watch this area as this is going to move west to east a little bit uh, in West Virginia and Virginia itself. This will move up into southern PA and into the northeast as well. And then, again, this uh flow we have coming from the Gulf flows up and then this way so it's going to come up and meet up with our west to east flow from the jet stream and it's going to push all this moisture that's in Texas way up into the northeast so that's what we have to look forward to uh, Corpus Christi got hit really hard you could match some of these numbers with rainfall totals uh, this is current so this is still going on right now uh, still, when you see half on water, half on land, you could tell that that's a refueling situation. Uh, we do have some rotation going on, but a lot of that water from the Gulf is refueling these storm cells and just dumping the rain back onto Texas. So, uh, just a lot of moisture. You can see here on this moisture chart we have on Tropical Tidbits, that upflow is the blue here. You can see all that blue covering that southeast uh, area, mid to southeast area of Texas. 
as we move forward. Those are their total accumulations. We can see this is not ending anytime soon. And then we have that low pressure system that starts right over Iowa and then moves across to the uh, northeast, which would be overnight tonight. You can see how that kind of whips down that way. And you could also see how it kind of whips down that way on the Doppler radar here. So this is the last frame. You can see a lot of dense moisture. When we see those dark reds and blacks, that's when you need to keep your eyes open. Now we can see why all that rain has entered that part of Texas. Again, even though it wasn't a tropical cyclone, that does not mean it does not hold a significant amount of rain. Like right here, this could have been seven inches of rain in a matter of four or five hours. That is why we have cars underwater. We have flash flooding, evacuations, beach erosion you name it everything that basically a hurricane or tropical storm can bring it has brought without even being named storm so again the uh, emphasis here is on the fact that even though we get tropical cyclones and hurricanes just a tropical wave itself has enough moisture to cause damage flash flooding and just stuff we do not want to deal with and now you can see some of these spotty storms moving up into Louisiana that was a refresh sorry about that I'll back it up again but we can see last night overnight we had those two spotty areas on the border of Louisiana and Texas and then that southern Texas almost bordering Mexico area uh, these are the areas that we needed to watch and these are the areas that got hit the hardest so as we move forward, you can see that counterclockwise rotation up at here. That is why we're getting those uh, hail and high wind rate warnings that are going to happen overnight tonight. So you can see where that kind of formed as it kind of dipped down from Texas also. This could have been a Baja pole that comes up this way and it starts whipping this way. And as it's doing that, it's pulling moisture from the Gulf. And that is why all that water was dumped onto Texas. So as we move forward here, you can see how that line begins to get more defined. We start getting that counterclockwise whipping motion with the low pressure in the central area of the country. And this was last night, that big storm cell that opened up that caused all this flooding along Texas. And now we can see that starting to circle around there. And that is why by tonight we're going to have to deal with that situation right here. So um, that's what we're dealing with now, guys. We got Texas under a lot of flood watching. Corpus Christi, San Antonio, Houston, Lake Charles, New Orleans even involved in this as this thing moves west to east. So um, even though we're not dealing with hurricanes as of right now, guys, we are dealing with significant weather, especially in Texas. Uh, showers, thunderstorms will be numerous in coastal Texas uh, through early Thursday, which is basically now. Major flooding has occurred in areas that have seen repeated bouts of rain. So the ground is saturated. And once it's saturated, that's when the water just starts packing up. So uh, just take caution, guys. Uh, be aware of where you live, uh, your uh, sea level, especially if you live in the uh, coastal areas, because that is where uh, this uh, is the most significant of situations. So here are a couple other uh, radar shots before I let you go. Um, you can see here the rain rates. We are all the way up into 6, 8, 10, some areas 15 inches of rain, guys. So, And it's not done yet. So you can see how this is a progression chart. It kind of moves along with time. You can see this area getting a little darker. You match it up to here. We could be anywhere from 8 to 15 inches of rain right in this area here. Um, that would be well to the east of Eagle Pass, uh, Pleasanton, and then Kiro is right there which will probably end up being in the same color as this. So that's where we're at for right now, guys. Uh, Mike's weather page here, SpaghettiModels.com. For those of you who like to look at the charts, we went over our temperatures, and this is what we're dealing with tonight. Remember, St. Louis, Louisville, Cincinnati, and then Memphis, all the way up underneath the Great Lakes. Be on alert tonight for damaging winds, flooding downpours, and hail um, as that whipping motion we just talked about. Uh, really hits its peak and that will be tonight so at night down trees stuff like that might not be a good morning commute for Friday but that's where we're at guys all right if I get back here this afternoon we will talk if not then first thing tomorrow morning we will meet back here that is our weather for now uh, tropics are quiet guys we're gonna keep an eye on them though thank you for listening and have a great day bye bye